Biggest. Uh, few scriptures we want to hit there. Uh, Leviticus, uh, Deacon Steve, Leviticus 11 and 45. And uh, Minister Tony, get uh, Leviticus uh, 19 and 2. Leviticus 11 and 45. Yes, sir. For I am the Lord. That For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land. That bring you up out of the land of Egypt, of Egypt. To be your God. To be your God. You shall therefore be holy. You shall therefore be holy. For I am holy. For I am holy. Amen. Uh, Minister Tony, Elder Tony. Leviticus nineteen and two. Yes. Speak unto all the congregations of the children of Israel. Speak to all the congregation of Israel. And say unto them. And say unto them. Ye shall be holy. Ye shall be holy. For I, the Lord your God. For I, the Lord your God. Am holy. Am holy. Can we say amen? Amen. Uh, you may be seated. I, I, I just briefly want to um, use for a topic uh, getting back to the old landmark. Uh, I, I must say... Uh, as your as your pastor, as your overseer, as the bishop of this house, uh, sometime we try to uh, adapt to uh, the needs of our congregation. Sometime, and what that have done, I will be the first to admit, as your pastor, what we have done is sometime we move the bar uh, to try to appease people, yes. but. I'm seeing now that, and I will first admit that in me moving the bar in some areas, it has allowed a lot of stuff to creep in that normally would not have crept in. Uh, you all to go, this is a holiness church. Uh, this is a sanctified church. Uh, we believe in living right. We believe in fighting against sin. We believe in coming out of sin. And so what it have allowed me as pastor, and I'll be the first to tell you I did it because I thought it was too rigid the way I was brought up. But I'm seeing now that I should have never moved the bar back. Amen. I moved the bar back trying to appease people and trying to make people feel comfortable. But regardless, it's still holding this hell. Yes. Uh, I, don't, I don't care who y'all, what y'all, we still got to, as people of God, is to live like God called us to live. Amen. There is no uh, a sugar mama and sugar daddy over in holiness. Amen. If you want to have sex, go get married. That's right. Amen by myself. Amen. We, 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 we can't keep going on and thinking it's all right. If you're in sin, you got to come out of sin. Amen, Amen by myself. This not gonna, Amen. This not going to be no shout message today. Amen. Amen. But we got to get back to the old landmark. We know, we know, and I'm going to say this, we know a uh, holiness is not in your clothes, but you need to cover your butt up when you come to church. Amen. I ain't going to get no help right now. Yes. Amen. amen. You know how you look before you left your house. Yeah. Shouldn't about to tell you, uh, amen. Shouldn't about to tell you how to dress. You've seen how you looked in the mirror. Is this appropriate for church? Amen. 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 The first lady should have to twist your arm and holler out on your face about what you got. You know the skirt and dress is too tight before you got here. Amen. Amen. Hey, I ain't going to get no help right there. Amen. It's still holiness. God has not lowered his standard, but sometimes we lower ours to try to appease people. Amen. A long time ago, ladies, you could not wear dresses in holiness. But we said try to appease people. I mean pants, excuse me, pants. We appease, well, okay, that's all right then. Wear pants, go ahead and wear pants. I'll put some kulaks on. Now we start to let you wear pants. Now you're wearing those too tight. Mm -hmm. Then you get mad when we say something to you about your pants being too tight. Amen, amen. Come on. I ain't going to get no help. This ain't going to be no shout message today. Amen. But it's still holy. Let me tell you something. Holiness is right if don't nobody want to live it. It's right if don't nobody want to do it. Because God has not ever lowered his standards. He said, you are my people and I want you to be holy for I am holy. Yes. We have to make a difference between the world versus the church. Now you don't know who's saved anymore. You don't know what, what's the difference. The, the, the church, they want to get earring, they want to get tattoo, they want to get everything. What is the difference? Hello, somebody. What is the difference? What is the coming out about? There's no coming out because you look just like them. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Somebody I know that there's something different about us. 
But we're trying to keep up with everything the world do. Because why? We don't want to be, we don't want to be like, oh, we the oddball. No, I love living safe. I don't know about you. Yeah. It's no strain for me. But when you ain't ready to live safe, it becomes a strain for you. Because you're always trying to find out how close can I live to the edge? How close can I play with sin? How close can I get away with this without getting caught? Let me tell you, the book says a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Just a little of anything is going to kill you sooner or later. So we got to get back to holiness, a lifestyle, the way we live, our conduct. Believers should be doing and saying any and everything. Our conduct should not be like the world. Now, as you heard uh, the first lady say this morning, she was talking to so because she messed with my message today. Uh, we know we're saved by grace, but we don't use grace for a license to get away with stuff. We know we're saved by grace. We know we didn't have nothing to do with it. But just because we saved by grace, I'm going to go ahead and do what I want to do. No, you're wrong. Amen. You got to make a difference between clean and unclean, holy and unholy. Yes, yes indeed. Said, I, the Lord your God, I am a holy God. And then Paul tells us, we didn't know our Bibles in Romans 12 and 1. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. That you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. Yes, indeed. Oh, yes, Lord. Your body, your hands, your eyes, your feet, your mouth, your brain. Because some of you all don't believe fat meat is greasy. You keep playing around with sin, it's going to get you sooner or later. You can duck and dodge and hide and, and, and like you ain't doing nothing, but I promise you, if you do it wrong, you're going to get caught sooner or later. If you got a problem, tell God you got a problem and you need delivered. Don't keep going like ain't nothing wrong and you know something wrong. The Hebrew writer says, follow peace with all men and holiness without no man shall see the Lord. So that tells them right there, if we ain't living holy, we ain't going to see the Lord. I just said the book said it. Follow peace with all men, holiness without no man shall see the Lord. We got to live right. From the little ones to the big one. You may not know everything, but said, as you come to the light, you walk therein. When someone has opened your understanding to some of Scripture, and then now that you got it, it's up to you to obey and do it. And a lot of people don't want to read because they don't be held accountable. Well, if I don't read it, I don't know it. So therefore, I won't read it, so therefore, it ain't going to be held accountable. He says, Made it plain, he says, Paul puts this like this. He says, come out from among them and be ye separated, says the Lord. Right. Now, I didn't tell you to come out. God told you to come out. Yes, yes. He told you to make a difference. I didn't do he, he tell you that. Okay, holiness is going to be right whether you don't ever like it. This, this is a clean Way of living. Yes, Not saying you're perfect, but you are pursuing perfectionness. When you find something that's not right, and then you work on it to change it. Yes. Because everybody desire here, if you profess to be saved, your desire is that you're supposed to be trying to please the Lord. Yes. And there's a certain way that we're supposed to walk. It says walk circumspectly. Yes. It tells us that's what we're supposed to do as Christians. 
And we got to strive as believers to do things. Yes, everybody knows sin is real. Everybody knows the devil. The devil is out there. But the Bible says, resist the devil, and he'll do what? Flee from you. Yes, Lord. You just can't lay down and let the devil run over you. Well, I just, I just lay on down. No, you got to put up a fight. Yes. Sin is after me, just like it's after you. If I give in to it, anybody can give in to it. You give in to it, it's a fight. It's a daily fight. Every time I get out of my bed on Monday through Sunday, there's a fight going on. In my life and in your life. The enemy would love to take us out. Not to obey the commandments of God and, and do what God desires us to be. So he says, Israel... Speak to the congregation. And I thought about when I looked at the text. Amen. Uh, just in that, in that verse, put the congregation, put New Bethel. Just highlight New Bethel there. Moses, Aaron, speak to the congregation of New Bethel. And tell them that they got to live holy. They got to live right. They got to do what's right. They got to be willing to obey. And he tells us if we obey, we can eat the good of the land. Yes. If we obey. And God is not interested in our sacrifices. He's interested in obedience. That's what he's interested in. Holiness. Sanctification. Justification. All that is a part of, of a God want us to be as believers. Know ye not that your body is what? The temple of the Holy Ghost. I didn't say this in your Bible. That you're saved now. Your body and your members are the temple of the Holy Ghost which live in you. So you don't take your body and just do any and everything with your body. Because your body belongs to God. If you're saved, the Bible says that you are no more your own. You've been bought with a price. You don't belong to yourself anymore. You belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. So therefore you can't do what you want to do. You can't play James Brown song. It's your thing. I can do what I want to do. You can't tell me who to sock it to. Oh, back that train up. Yes, we can. If you say we can, if you profess to be a believer, we can. And he's calling you to be holy. He's calling you to do the right thing. And I know some of you young folks say, oh, Pastor, he, he old and foggy and he all out of date. Honey, I'm up to, up to date just as you are. Amen. I know just about everything that all the world has dropped some. I listen, I listen to that garbage truth to see what they're saying. And some of that mess is nothing but garbage. Amen. I don't even know some of you how you parents and allow your kids to listen to that garbage. Who will listen to somebody calls somebody bees all the time? Bees, 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 bees. I'm like, my God, how many times they going to say bees? And they just bumping with it. That crap is crap. Get in your membrane. Because what you listen to, go in. Don't fool yourself. It don't bother me. Yes, it do. My wife didn't get on me sometimes about the movies I used to watch. Children, how can you sit and watch that bloody horror stuff? She doesn't that bothers you. I can't watch it. Turn that mess off. Turn it off. <laughs> yes, I obey my wife sometimes. <laughs> I say all of them. I say some. <laughs> but the holiness. Hold this. We have to get back to the old landmark. We have to, I have to say this, Pastor, we got to put the fence back up that we let down. Some of y'all ain't going to like it, but we got to get back to where Mother Ruby Davis uh, taught us. And Ella Davis, we got to get back to that foundation. Sanctification. 
Yes, we know, in, we know it's not in your dress. We know that. But please, at least cover up a little bit. You ain't, you ain't got to come here looking like you ready to go to the nightclub. Amen. Even us as men, what look like me as your pastor coming with a pimp daddy cock hat on and got a pimp cane walking? <laughs> you say, Pastor, I ain't trying to turn into a pimp or something. <laughs> we did that crap in the world. Amen. You don't bring that garbage over into holiness. Amen. Trying to be different from the world. Even in, our, even in our dealings with one another, we don't deal with one another uh, the way we deal with the world. Our job is to be honest and genuine to one another. No one in here that's saying how to bend is lying to nobody. Amen. Amen. Never in all my days I've seen so many lying saints. Why, do we, why are we lying to one another? We don't have to do that anymore. We did that mess in the world. Why don't we talk behind one of the back? We did that mess in the world. Yeah, if I got a problem with you, Steve, I'm coming to you. I ain't going to Tony. Yeah, so look, play, I need to talk to you. Yeah. Well, Tony, I, I, I want to talk to Steve, but I don't know how to say it. Yes, I do know how to say it. Yeah, Still talking about holiness. Yeah, we got to get back there. And not tomorrow, today. Some say, but the old, the old way still works. People just don't want to do it. You go to a sanctified church? Well, I don't want to go there. Y'all hold too long. It amazes me. People make me sick sometimes. It amazes me. Y'all hold church too long. You didn't say it when you was getting drunk in the nightclub, did you? But now you can say that they hold church too long. You didn't say when you at the bar getting sloppy drunk, falling down, so had to get you right home. But then you can say to church, they hold church too long. When are we going to get out? You don't say that when you go to the football game. Yeah, I ain't been no help this morning. You can put your seatbelt on today. It amazes me. We go everywhere else on time, but we can't get to church on time. It amazes me. Say, Pastor, I don't want today. He's showing up for the kids. No, this is where I preach all the time. Uh, but, 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 but it amazes me. I'm just, I'm just appalled by some stuff. But yet we want God to bless us. Yes, we want God to make a way. Yes, we want God to open the door. Yes, we want God to bless We don't do nothing God told us to do. God said, bring me your best goat, your best lamb. We'll find a sick calf and bring him. <laughs> Let me look back through the herd. That, that one over there like is on the way out. Uh, <laughs> get that one. Y'all know I'm telling the truth? Yeah. Yeah. Give me your best. God said, give me your best offering. Let me have your best offering. We'll push past all the twenties <laughs> and look for the dollar bill. Yes, yes, the dollar that said he's so tired of going to church, he's sick. <laughs> Hold it. You got to make a difference. And one thing about it. We cannot follow you home. Amen. I don't have time to follow you. And let me tell you something. If you are sanctified and being called in a place that you ain't got no business, somebody going to see you. Yes, Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Yes, indeed. Somebody told my wife something last week. said, I've seen so-and-so, so-and-so. And my wife came and said, Joseph, what is this? I said, you know, I ain't dropping out the game a long time. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I don't know nothing about, about that one. She said, well, so-and-so, so-and-so. I said, what? I said, hey, well, you know, they're hanging out there. They're going to get called sooner or later. Because the, the worldly folk, they know where you ain't supposed to be at. Right, right. right. Sure. 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 Yeah. They know where you ain't supposed to be at. Yeah. What look like you? What look like you? Preacher. 
up in the nightclub with the lights out in the corner. <laughs> 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 Some of y'all don't believe this is real. The word get back. The word get back. I sing songs, so don't he go to your church? Right. Man, he was over there in that club just bringing it all the way down and just dropping it. You know that? Say, what? What can you say? But you know he's going to be living right, but you can't make people live right. Live right. He know holding this. He know what he's doing is wrong. Right. Amen. If he ain't got no convictions of his life, I can't put none on him. I got my own convictions. Amen. And I don't override them either. Those, that, that, that is my safety net since I've been saying my convictions. Amen. You can do what you want to do, but as for me and my house, yeah. this is what we're going to do. And there's boundaries in my life. Right. Amen. There's places I don't go, there's folk I don't hang out with, there's conversations I don't even talk. Yeah. I, don't even, I don't even engage certain stuff. Don't even do it. Because let me tell you something. Sin is real. And it plays for keeps. I had a friend that said uh, when he backslid, said he kept him a little bit longer than he wanted to stay. So you can play around with it if you want to, but I promise you, you're going to get burned. Mm -hmm. Just like the Bible says with a man, can a man walk on hot coals and not get burned? It's impossible. You're going to get burned sooner or later. And then, as I said in one of my sermons once before, uh, just because you're sanctified, uh, diseases still attack your house. No, if you do what you ain't got no business doing. Yeah, you can pray and get healed and delivered, but it still can affect you. Then what happens is, how did so-and-so mess around and get that? Mm. Well, we know certain diseases only come by certain things, right? Amen. <laughs> Somebody says, suck it, suck it now. <laughs> Well, you only can get that by this. Oh, no, I just woke up and I had it. No, you didn't. No. <laughs> Look at Ephesians 5 8. Look what Paul says here, real fast. I love the way of holiness. I don't know about you. I'm so glad I was introduced to it. Amen. He says, For you were sometime in darkness, but now you light in the Lord. Walk as true of the light. You don't need no education to figure that one out. <laughs> we all here came from some type of darkness, came from somewhere. We was in darkness. We didn't know. We didn't something. We didn't know no better. Just somebody introduced us to it. Now we have got over in into Christianity, into into walking and serving the Lord. That's why it's important now that we come and get the Word of God, that we know how to walk and we know how to live right. We know what not to do and how to do it in a proper way to do it. And one thing good about the Bible, it has an answer for every situation. Tells the parents, do not exacerbate your kids to provoke them to wrath. Gives us all type of answers to help us. And how to bring them up in the nourishment of the Lord. How that the man is going to love his wife as Christ loved the church. It gives us all type of answers to keep uh, the marriage bed undefiled. Holiness. I 
I ain't going there today. You're trying to get me off track. <laughs> holiness. And I believe everyone under the sound of my voice know holiness is right. Amen. Where have you lowered the bar at? Where have you let the bar down at? Even in our homes, we, have, we, we, we set a standard. And sometimes we move the standard back trying to appease our kids. And then before you know it, a wildfire done broke out. My daddy's strict. Yes, I am. There's nothing wrong with being strict. Keep you out a lot of mystery. Keep you out a lot of trouble. My daddy knows. Yeah, I'm going to be nosy till you leave here. Amen. That's my job. That's my responsibility. To know everything about you. Keep it a rain. The Bible even said if you read the Old Testament that they even put the scriptures up on the doorposts. Yeah. Read them when they got up. Read them when they got down. And some of our young folks know more rap song than they know scripture. <coughs> but you ask them about that ugly Wayne Wayne. They'll say he said something about him. <laughs> yeah, you know he ugly. He's got a lot of money, but he's still ugly. <laughs> then he really sick, all that crap, all this. Yes. Like, what a person they right mind would do their body like that? <coughs> this is crazy. crazy. But we got people that want to be like that. Yes. <coughs> I'm like, well, I just want, don't you know one starts out to two? Yeah. Yep. Then it, did it escalate, 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 just keep going, going, going? I see a young lady at the, I think it was, it was, it was Denny's Friday when we had a, a, a trustee meeting. And I noticed she had a tattoo on there, but she was getting a tattoo taken off. And I said, uh, uh, why are you getting that tattoo taken off? Certain businesses don't want you with no tattoos. Oh, that's right. So I figured if, if the world don't want it, can the church say we don't want it either? <laughs> so I said, oh, it's bad. you hitting that. You, you all in my Kool-Aid, you know, you, you tripping today. <laughs> no, I'm just talking about holiness. There's things that when we were brought up, we just didn't do. We just didn't let happen. The sanctified mothers would catch you at the door. Amen. Come in, baby. Come in. Not baby. They said, baby, that dress is too short. Yeah. Put some The day you do a young girl like that, she ready to punch you. Uh huh. They show. Nothing wrong with it. That's the old landmark. Because everybody coming to the house ain't saved. Yeah. And that's being responsibility. Just because you're a female, you still are your brother's keeper. Yes. Yes. You don't do stuff in a provocative way to bring attention to you. I'm talking real good now. Yes. Why do you think James? Why do you think James talked about in, in the in the book of James? Those people that came to church dressed in coffee or red and all that stuff. They brought it was bringing attention to them. You don't bring anything to bring attention to you. Okay. Say it. Anything. You don't dress in a seductive way to bring attention to you. Not a sanctified woman. No one of the other women they dress whatever the way they want to dress like. They. But that's what I liked about the old landmark. People didn't like it. I ain't going back to that church. That old lady grabbed me and threw a blanket on me. I ain't going back there. We should put that hand on me. But I tell you what, you respected them. Yeah. Yes. Amen. And you knew definitely that church right there on that corner, you can't go there any type of way. I know that's right. Say it. Say it. 
They, they, they had that standard going on. So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying we need to get back to where we was. And I'll be the first to say, as I said earlier in my message, that I'll, I'll be the first to say I was wrong in trying to appease people, make them feel welcome and all that type of stuff, and try to sometimes change the tone of, of the way I deliver the message sometimes. I like that, but he preached too hard. All he do is preach about how to live right and what we got to do. And he ever going to change his message? No! <laughs> Because if I got to live right, you got to live right. Amen, Pastor. you get out think you can do whatever you want to do, then I got to do right, but you can do anything you want to do. Where do you get that from? Me and you reading the same Bible? How do you come to that conclusion? If I got to come out of mess, you got to come out of mess. If I got to pay to quit home, you got to quit home. What makes you think you're different than me? Right. That's right. If I gotta quit lying, you gotta quit lying. Yes. If my word gotta be good, your word gotta be good. Yeah. I'm talking real good now, yes, folks. You might not want to put this one on YouTube, Ricky. <laughs> still holding this. It is still holding this. From the baby long to the adults, it's still holiness. We got to get back to that landmark and start striving and doing what's right. And the pleasing God and what He's calling for us to do as believers. If it's wrong, make it right. That's all you got to do. I'm glad I was. I didn't, and I told y'all this once before. I, I, I didn't even know nothing about holiness until I came to California. Know a bit more about holiness in a, in a man in, a, a, in the moon. They don't know about living, right? But once I got here and, and got a hold to it and got in it, man, this is good stuff right here. Amen. This is good stuff. This is this is good ground. Have you ever, have you ever, have you ever tasted some fruit that came out of good ground? This is good ground. Fertile ground. Good soil. Solid food that's good for your soul. Yeah, I know sometimes it's bitter going down. Like now some of y'all right now, y'all probably just y'all ain't showing, but some of y'all probably mad right now. You got a you got a sanctified attitude on the inside because you're like past the trip today. But I said, mean, once you swallow it and you get down in your belly. And you really start thinking about what I said, you will say, you know what, Pastor, here's right. 